Did you ever wonder if you can trust Notion with your valuable personal data? And if it's capable to scale up to a larger team in the future? Let's dive into why I think Notion is dropping the ball on scaling towards teams, how the API is already there but keeps getting delayed, and what you need to know to avoid getting stuck in the future. While you know me from my Notion videos, during the rest of the week, I'm an infra engineer. I have worked for large companies like eBay Classifieds and the city of Amsterdam on things like security, scaling, and automated deployments. This is my Roomba, and you might be wondering what that has to do with Notion. Please bear with me. Now, my Roomba cleans my ground floor every day. It starts at 7 in the morning, and I do nothing except watch it go while I'm getting my first coffee. This is what automation does. I spend very little effort except for cleaning the dustbin once every six months or so, and I do not need to explain anybody in the house how it works. It just does its thing. Automation is good. It allows you to scale a solution. And Notion doesn't have any automation. It can create templates for you and you can use formulas to show some calculations, but there's no way to tell it that when you push a button, it should move a due date up a week or inform someone that action is required. It's usually a template or a filter, but the logic is in your mind and not in Notion. Then we get to the security bit and Notion lacks the ability to block a certain set of a page. There are a few methods to work around it to make it like workable. So like the page locks or the DB locks, using versioning to go back or creating a special read-only page that shows filtered content. But once people need to work there, eventually you start hitting limits where people either can't get something done or remove the lock altogether. Remember, the aim is to be productive, not a babysitter for your data as soon as you want to share it with people. This is why Excel has an option to protect cells and why most software has a lot of internal checks and balances to avoid people making mistakes or entering bad data. So we lack automation and we lack the ability to secure sections of work. And that's when we start hitting scaling issues. There's a saying, programming today is a race between software engineers striving to build bigger and better idiot-proof programs and the universe trying to produce bigger and better idiots. So far, the universe is winning. Now, I'm not saying you are working with idiots, but I am saying that if you get enough people involved, the odds are stacked against you. While you can share the thought process to your Notion page with a couple of people, that will only work fine in smaller groups. Start growing in larger numbers, however, and you will be spending most of your time either explaining the system or worse, cleaning up the mess other people made in your system. Because if you ever played the telephone game where you tell someone about a cat and they tell it to another and another and another and once you get through 20 people it has turned into a pony that barks. People are good at making stuff up and computers are good in repeating whatever we made up. One of the reasons we like Notion is because it helps us stay organized with templates and simple database structures. Its flexibility, however, means our work methods are in our heads and not in Notion, where we need it once we start to scale. Now, if we had an API, external teams could build some kind of solution for this. So let's get into that. The API has been promised for over two and a half years, and it will be another six months before going into open beta. Now, I have seen this song and dance before twice already, so I'm not holding my breath. But I also know the API is already here. It's on version 3 even, and it's getting used every day. For this, I can do a simple analysis on the Notion website. Looking into its network traffic, I can simply search for API and find the line where it talks to the version 3 API to fetch information. And that's expected, because any modern application is using an API to talk to their backend. The way that modern applications work is that they are split up in a front end, 
think an app on your phone, website, desktop application, and a backend that stores your information and keeps it secure. The glue between these two is an API. And having a public API means that other people can also build a front end, usually to do one specific task very well. For example, by providing a form with sanity checks so you can get clean data from a group of end users. Now, if the API is already there, why is it taking so long? I'm going to speculate a bit because Notion is pretty tight-lipped on the whole API bit. Considering their track record, my first assumption would be that a large part of the logic of Notion is in the front end and not in the back end. What that means is that things like filter calculations and input sanity checks, say making sure a date field has an actual date and not the words January, is done in the front end. This is fine when you're the only one using the API, but once you open it up, people expect that their carefully crafted filters and calculations will show up in API requests. Moving this from front end to back end or finding some method to keep it maintained on both sides is a considerable workload. Another reason is that once you open up an API, you can no longer change it because software depends on the API to work the same every time. Computers are not as flexible as humans, so making changes to it results into custom solutions breaking. If that happens now, it's because they are reverse engineering the Notion API and it came with no guarantee, but that changes once you make it public. This specific bit is however less of an issue, as they already have versioning on it, remember they are at version 3, so that means that they have systems in place to handle large changes by upgrading the version and keeping the old one around. Though that comes with a lot of work to stay backwards compatible. Just have a look at Microsoft that's still supporting Windows 95 more than 22 years after release. Now I get some of the struggles, but what really worries me is that they are trying to do it right the first time. And in that case, I'm looking at you Cyberpunk 2077. There is no such thing as doing it right the first time, at least not in software development. In my decades as a system engineer, I have yet to see this succeed. What usually happens is that it gets delayed, it gets delayed again, and eventually something gets released when they can no longer delay it and it's far from ready. And that's what really worries me. The better solution is an agile working method. It works by releasing a small bit of functionality, learning from that, improving on it, and built to keep going. And I'm going to take a hard stand in this. If you are waiting for the Notion API, stop waiting and start figuring out how to use Coda or another tool instead, because I'm betting that it will be late, it will be bad, and it will take some time before it's fully working. Now let's look at the future, starting with what I hope Notion fixes to remedy my comments. First, get all the logic into the backend. This will help others in creating robust extensions that won't do unexpected things. Second, allow locking of blocks so we can get control what we want to be changeable and keep that method as simple as they have done till now because simplicity is one of their strong suits. Some way for others to extend Notion, like an add-on shop of some kind, or at the very least buttons that allow running external actions. By allowing custom add-ons, you can keep the core simple, but add functionality where needed. If you are already using Notion or think of starting, I would recommend running a small export using Markdown and CSV format to see if you can import that in Excel. This will teach you a lot about the limitations and will make sure that you know what you're getting into if you need to migrate in the future. The basics would be either use a database and only properties or treat it as a wiki with mostly content. The properties and tax setup of Notion is amazing, but very hard to migrate to other setups and as such should be used with care. Next to that, keep in mind that the API might never show and that if it does show, will take some time before it's fully usable. 
Simplicity is the focus of Notion and an API is the exact opposite. Put information that you need elsewhere in other tools and embed or link them in Notion for a simple overview. If you notice that you need a lot of copy and paste between Notion and another tool, then keep that information in the other tool and link to it from Notion. And finally, pair up with a coworker if you are scaling up. By working together, you both can keep the system clean and make sure that small issues get fixed before a larger group of people is already used to the way of working with them. Keep in mind that changing a working method is pretty hard because you need to reprogram everybody's way of working. Now, in the next video, I'm going to get back to getting the most out of Notion. But this was something that I really needed to get off my chest as the constant delays on the API are rubbing me in the wrong way, both as a content creator and a system engineer. Be sure to watch any of my other content on the site here. And if you enjoyed this, then also be sure to like, subscribe and tell others about it. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.